Good morning to everyone. I hope all of you are well and uh, enjoying a sunny day, and I hope that you find some pleasure in the day. Our opening words uh, kind of suggest that's a great way to live life, so if you'll join with me, Psalm 118, verse 24. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and gratitude. And I hope you do find a way to rejoice. Um, before I do some announcements, I think my daughter is here somewhere. Sarah Francis right there uh, with child. So uh, if you get a chance to, to welcome her. Um, I do want to extend a welcome to other visitors who are here with us. Uh, it is a delight to have you here, and, and we're glad for your presence. Um, there, are, there are some people that have been... Um, uh, considering joining uh, with us. So in the next month or so, I'm going to work with you know, the worship team and figure out how to reach out to you and see if you'd like to be uh, part of, of this faith community. Um, and uh, we'll try to reach out to you pretty soon. Uh, there are a couple of other announcements. We have begun a new offering, uh, Change for Change, which is uh, a mission initiative uh, and we're inviting you next week to bring coins, or if you want to write a check, that'd be fine. Uh, the monies are being collected to uh, deal with food scarcity. Um, the bags that we have on uh, offer in the office for the people who come to the church door, of which we do have people come, and for other ways that we'll be uh, working uh, with food scarcity in the area. Um, uh, I also will let you know we've been developing a liturgical arts team, so we're working with a number of people in the church who are interested in writing liturgy. Uh, you'll see today that Reese Terry has provided a variation on the Lord's Prayer. If any of you are interested in participating with our team of uh, being the ones that write the liturgy for our services, you let Diane uh, know. We meet, uh, we meet later today. We'd love, love to have you, and I hope you'll enjoy the work that people uh, offer and also make sure you um, uh, give an offer of praise to them. Um, I think we got one more announcement, and that is to invite Glenn to uh, introduce some folks. I'll just do it from over here. Good morning. I have the pleasure and privilege this morning to introduce to you our two newest choral scholars. Uh, the first one is Bailey Bauer. Bailey, if you'll stand, please. Bailey is a sophomore at University of Houston, and uh, her major is vocal performance. Thank you, Bailey. And our other one is Grant Peck. Grant is also a vocal performance major. He's a grad student, and uh, we're glad to have both of you join our ranks. Thank you. One last announcement. Um, pretty much every day, um, I'm having opinions thrown at me about these. Um, and I, uh, I'm a big believer in being Presbyterian in the sense of doing things decently in order. So I have asked James to get together with the uh, campus management team and some others to create uh, a plan that we can give to you so you have a sense of when we're going to finally roll away from that. Um, it's kind of a delicate dance because uh, we do have people who still are not coming to worship. I know who they, uh, some of them are because they're afraid of COVID. Um, and we have others who are ready to be done with this and variations in between. I think all of you can understand that this is a, a complicated issue. So I would, I'm asking uh, that you all help us do things decently in order. We'll start with James and them getting a a concept together which will go to the elders. The elders are the ones that make that decision. And the aim is to provide for you some knowledge of where we're heading so you can at least begin to see it into these things. Uh, how many of you are ready to be done with them? Yeah, yeah. Um, um, but let's do this decently in order, okay? Um, God is good? All the time. All the time? Let us worship.
Please join me in our call to worship. Cry out with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with singing. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Let us worship God. Almighty God, open our hearts and our minds that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And please stand and join us in singing Come Thou Almighty King, which is number two in your hymnal. God's amazing love is this. <clears throat> While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Because we have faith in him, we dare to approach God with confidence. Let us confess our sins together before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways in the glory of your holy name. Now let us go to God in silent confession. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven.
peace of God brings joy to all. Share that peace with one another with a wave or a smile. And for those at home or when you go home, I encourage you to share the peace with others today through texts, posts, phone calls, emails, or in person so that we all know of God's forgiveness and peace. And may the peace of Christ be with you all. Let us pass the peace. Hi, guys. It's good to see you. Thanks for coming up. Um, I noticed the other day that the days are getting a little longer. And maybe not so much today, but some of the days have even been warmer. So I got to thinking, it's time to start planting my garden. So I went to the store, and I bought some seeds. Have you ever seen flowers like these? Do you know what they're called? Sunflowers, yes. Now, I don't know about you, but I love sunflowers. It is just impossible for me to be sad when I see a sunflower. They always make me smile. They're so big and tall and bright and cheerful looking, they just bring a smile to my face and make me happy in my heart. And sunflowers are pretty amazing flowers, but I think the coolest thing about them is did you know when you plant a sunflower seed in the ground and it starts to grow, that as soon as the flower forms, it looks to the sun all day long, every day, as the sun goes from the east to the west, that flower follows along. Now, the sunflower knows what's good for it, right? Because the sun helps plants grow. The sun helps plants produce food so that they get healthy and big and strong. And they even uh, ripen those delicious little sunflower seeds that make such a good snack. And I got to thinking, we could learn a lot from the sunflower. Now, I don't mean we should go outside and look up at the sun all day, every day. That wouldn't be good for our eyes. It wouldn't be good for our skin. And it would be a gigantic waste of time. Plus, it would be pretty boring. But as children of God, we have something that we could look to each day to help us to grow. If we look to God every day to give us help in growing and making good decisions, um, in becoming the people that God wants us to be, we'll turn out just like those sunflowers where when people look at us, they smile and we're happy too because we're the face of God on the earth. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for the sun. Thank you for gardens and sunflowers. But most especially, thank you for loving us. Help us to turn to you each day. Amen. Thank you so much. The theme today is a little unusual, I suppose. I'm beginning to think of public worship uh, as a prophetic act. And I'll say more about that in a minute. But um, I want you to take a look at the image on uh, the bulletin. This is of a Lutheran church in Iceland. Uh, it, unfortunately, the image doesn't come out quite as beautiful as the sanctuary itself. Um, but it's a, it's a beautiful place, and it's a reminder, uh, if you look at the image, that it's pointing beyond ourselves uh, to something more than ourselves. Uh, the conversation today will be about worship and about formation in worship. Um, And the two texts focus a little bit on that. So Psalm 138 is a psalm of thanksgiving and praise. And it uh, it suggests uh, one way that we be uh, in the way we live our lives, which is 
uh, our deep need to, um, to give praise and to reverence the holy and to acknowledge with, e- with each other that we are not on our own. So hear these words from Psalm 138. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he perceives from far away. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand, your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O God, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Thank you for that. I reversed the text because uh, Psalm 100 is actually uh, one of my favorites. Uh, I learned it in, as a hymn called the Old 100th. It's one of the, um, the Old 100th is one of the tunes that came from Scotland with the Scottish Presbyterians to the United States. Um, the text may be familiar to you. Uh, we've often sung it in various forms. Um, it goes this way. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm going to continue to try to keep things simple uh, in this uh, period of the year. Um, the topic is worship. Uh, the, the word worship in Hebrew really means gravitas. It's, it means to give appropriate weight to the ultimate and public worship is when people gather to come and give an appropriate reverence or appropriate weight or appropriate gravitas to the God that we have come to know through the one called Jesus. The reality is all throughout history, people have had to worship. Uh, there are some Zoroastrians, which is the oldest monotheistic religion in the world, here in Houston, dates back to 3500 BC, that have their own sanctuary today, and they will be also, in a different way, coming together to worship, to give a certain gravitas or weight to the ultimate, to the one we would call God. It's been true for all people, in all ways, in all places, throughout all history. My question that I want to stick in your mind to muse on is why do you worship? Why did you come today to worship? Certainly there's a habit to it, but is there something deeper? Is there within you something that simply needs to acknowledge that you're not alone? Something deep within you that needs to acknowledge the ultimate, the one we would call God. I was talking to Father Perry many, many years ago, who was the uh, senior uh, priest at Holy Ghost Catholic Church in Hammond, Louisiana. We were having lunch one day, and he was telling me uh, about Mass. And uh, he said, did you know that priests offer Mass even when nobody shows up. And he says, he was telling me that in a lot of countries where Christianity had died off, like in Europe, uh, for decades, many priests go through the mass every day, even though nobody's there. And I, I, said, I said, that's strange. And he says, the church has a prophetic act of going through worship, even if others aren't there, uh, until they finally come back around and they want to get out of the ugliness of life, they want to get out of the loneliness of life, they want to get out of the isolation of life, they reawaken to the reality that we are not alone. And so the priests are ready to offer mass to those individuals who finally find their way back to a place, a space, where the priest standing in the role of the holy to offer the bread and of the drink. You know, I've often wondered why I worship, um, but I think the deepest part of who I am in terms of being a Christian is the need to acknowledge a creator. I'm smart enough to argue God out of my mind, but what I can't argue is 
deep within me is a conviction that I'm a creature and that I'm made by a creator. I'm, I'm really aware of the fact that even though my mother and father are the source of my presence here, um, I'm not an accident. I didn't make myself up. I had nothing to do with my creation. I had nothing to do with my blonde hair, my left hand. I had nothing to do with anything about who I am. I, in my mind, was a thought of God. In his mind, long before the love of my parents, I just have a deep sense of my giftedness. And I wonder if you can understand that. How much of life is given to us. People talk about earning a living, but you are given the opportunity to earn a living. Everything about life is given, and so out of that sense of the givenness and the mystery of creation, for me, I have a deep need to lend appropriate gravitas, appropriate weight to the God beyond my understanding. I remember when Mary Helen and I were with her family in Scotland many, many years ago, her brother, who's a Presbyterian minister, and I decided we would go um, to church. And I remember we drove through three or four towns before we could find an open church. We passed countless boarded up old Scottish Presbyterian churches. Scotland is a land like a lot of places in Europe uh, where people see no need to worship anymore. And it was, it was an odd experience to see all those boarded churches and it made me wonder if Ernie and I as preachers were kind of in sort of some sort of losing game. But we finally found this free church of Scotland church and we walked in and we were able to join with people to give reverence to the God that we know. Why do you worship? Why do you worship beyond, beyond this uh, habit that is a good habit? Is there something deeper within you? In Greensboro, in the sanctuary, we left it unlocked. And I lived across the street from the church. And I often walked through the sanctuary. And it was very frequent in all the years we were there where I would see individuals sitting in the sanctuary by themselves. I often left them alone because I could tell something weighty was going on. I especially remember Laurie Camp. Laurie Camp was in that sanctuary for weeks in a struggle. And deep within her was a call from God. At least that's what she was trying to sort. Is it a call from God or is it something else? And the only way she could sort it out was to sit in the sanctuary by herself until finally she came to clarify what was going on. And uh, Lori ended up being a missionary in Peru and uh, she married a Peruvian Presbyterian minister, and she and her family now are in Peru doing ministry together. But it was in that sanctuary, and I've always been fascinated by people who find their way into the sanctuary. Why do they do that? It's because deep within them, there is something deeper than anything human beings can create. There's something that we call God. And people all throughout history seem to have a need to gather together to do the work of reverence. Now, everybody worries about the decline of the church. Everybody sees the younger generations who are either saying they're spiritual but not religious or just identifying as nuns, N-O-N-E-S. And there are reasons for people walking away from church, there are gazillions. But I don't think that people can walk away all their life from reverence. 
I, I don't think people can walk away all of their lives <clears throat> from giving reverence for the creator, for the creation that we are. But I could be wrong. And even though right now so many people are walking away from the worshiping communities, let me suggest that right now I think worship is becoming a prophetic act, a witness act, a truth act to those who no longer see the church as relevant. For there are some things that we do that stand against the ugliness of our culture, the, the, the shallowness of our culture. Churches do beauty well. Churches do beauty well. And I don't know what you think about beauty, but I know this, that beauty heals people. And churches do beauty well. Let's make beauty great again. I do know that there is something very healthy for people to gather to acknowledge that we're not alone. That we're not alone. That we are not left alone. But there is a divine presence that people can only attest to, not prove. They can only speak to, they can only sing to, they can only give statements of that we're not alone and that there is a creator. We do public reverence for God well. Let's do public reverence well again. There is the reality that we pray and we sing and we sometimes kneel and we sometimes raise our hands and we sometimes repeat ancient words, there is something very healthy for people to gather and to offer words that are sacred and that have a link to the people who've gone before us, the people of God in our own family that handed us a story. And now is the time of our testing as the divine spirit moves through us, as we use the sacred words to pass them on to the next generation. Let's make liturgy great again. Let's make dignity great again. One of the great things about being a Presbyterian is our commitment to unity in the midst of diversity. Let's make the dignity of difference great again because it's in the DNA of who we are as Presbyterians. And we honor it when we allow, for example, men and women and children to be part of the leadership of the church. Let's make this dignity of difference great again. People are taking for granted the importance of community. People tell me they can find community other ways. They cannot find a community like the church and anything else. This is where we do sacred acts like weddings, and baptisms and funerals. This is where we use a sacred book and engage in conversations with the sacred words that have come down to us to make sense of who God is in the here and the now. This is where we eat together and we break bread together and we decide together to take some offerings up to give to the poor. This is where you come to hear somebody say, do right by the poor. This is a community that's not like other communities. Let's make the community that is called the church great again. This is where we have a really different kind of leaders than the leaders people are gravitating to now. The leader we have is named Jesus. And Jesus made sure that we all know the sacred order of life. Everybody has the image of God indelibly imprinted upon them. Nobody has more or less in terms of an image of God. And therefore, because we all have that same image, that dictates how we should treat each other. That's our Jesus. That's the leader. Let's make Jesus great again. And let's make Jesus untethered from politicians. 
Let's make truth again. There are truths. The golden rule is a truth. The golden rule is a truth. God is a truth. Jesus is a truth. We are all equal, men and women. That is a truth. Let's make truth again. That's what churches do well. Let's make goodness great again. Because it's here in the church that we are called to ask and and to join with others into doing beautiful things for God on a steady and regular basis. I don't know where other people are going to get that kind of call. Jesus tells us, take care of the widow and the orphan. Jesus tells us to heal the sick. Jesus tells us to liberate those who are oppressed. Jesus tells us to give people a cup of water and a bowl of soup. We do that well. Let's make that witness great again. What holds us all together, though, is worship. Where we gather in a beautiful place and sing and pray and speak and give appropriate gravitas to the Creator. And so let's make worship great again. We'll witness just like those priests if we have to. There may not be an audience who's ready yet, an audience maybe that prefers the ugly and the hostile and the angry and the isolated and the aggravated and, and the limits of money and so much more. People got to do what they've got to do. Let's just keep gathering and we'll be, got, we'll be like prophets. We'll be like prophets giving witness. You can go that way if you want. Whenever you make secondary things ultimate, things aren't going to go well. Come back, give focus to the ultimate in reverence for the God that we know most clearly and most profoundly in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Lord, if there's someone here today who came to worship because they are struggling with life and need something more than their own life energies, we pray that they find your divine presence in and through us. And somehow they're strengthened. We pray that you help us to worship well and to continue to refine and allow our public worship to be more dignified and honorable and beautiful. We recognize that it is possible that right now is a time when worship is a prophetic act, a witness over against a lot of the darkness in our culture. May we be a light in this place. We thank you for that hole that is inside us that can only be filled by divine presence, the inner light. We thank you that you have created us with a need to give reverence and honor and dignity to you, the creator. So here are our deepest prayers we ask. And all the people together say, amen. So our invitation to discipleship comes from 1 Peter. For it stands in scripture, see I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, Jesus his name. And whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. If any of you are interested in joining with us or just walking alongside us, I'd be happy to talk with you. You can see me right after the service. Please stand and join with me in our affirmation of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, <clears throat> born of the Virgin Mary, suffered, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Holy God, we gather the whole universe into your radiant presence and continually reveal your Son as our Savior. To God, who welcomes all in love, let us pray for the good of the church and the concerns of those in need. Bring healing to all wounds. Make whole all that is broken. Speak truth to all illusion and shed light in every darkness. That all creation will see your glory and know your Christ. Amen. Again, I want to continue to say thank you for the stewardship of all our life energies. The people are so generous in this congregation. Uh, heed these words. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And with gratitude in your heart, sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Thank you for your stewardship of public worship. I deeply appreciate it, as do others. Um, Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please join as we recite a version of the Lord's Prayer. Dear Lord God of the universe and galaxies, we need your help in bringing our societies near your heavenly example. We on earth seem to be drifting further apart. Please help us to become more like your heaven. Give us our daily nourishment for body and soul. Forgive us for our worldly desires and mistakes as we forgive those who have wronged us. Guide us along the path of goodness and light and away from the paths leading to darkness, danger, and evil. For yours is the heavenly kingdom, your power over all the universe, and your infinite heavenly glory. Amen. Thank you. 
Please be seated for the charge and blessing and remain seated for the post salute. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. <laughs>